welcome everyone to Heroescape here today, coming at you with another installment of Ranking Heroescape Age of Annihilation. Today we're going to be talking about Knight Irene. This is the final ranking uh, video of the first wave of Age of Annihilation. I'll continue to do these for future waves of uh, units as well. Just before we hop in, uh, do take a look at the description for the affiliate link. Uh, for those of you that haven't purchased Age of Annihilation yet, Wave 2 or Wave 1, uh, you can use that to uh, help support the channel if you plan on buying Heroescape already. All right, well, let's jump into the Night Irene review. Night Irene, following Jandar, is an Earth sign, new species. Uh, unique hero, champion, uh, valiant, and large, eight. Large is significant because uh, a lot of abilities don't affect large figures, which is good. Life five, move four, range one, attack four, defense four. 110 points, and based off of that stat line and abilities right there, I feel really good about her. Um, I think the stat line is solid. Uh, five life, four defense is just really good survivability, and four attack to go along with it is just really just a, a solid hero, even if there were no abilities. That's just good stats. The four move is a little bit slow um, as, a, as a base move, obviously, but, I mean, this miniature is also super imposing, super big, so it's not terribly unreasonable that uh, that this mini is uh, taking a little bit longer to get to its place. Um, also worth noting that the uh, hit zone is really cool, that the arms with the armor are non-hit zones. I think that's pretty nifty. Um, and uh, so it's very relevant, actually, because the miniature itself, the arms are sticking really far out, so you can kind of hide the figure uh, behind stuff. Anyway, the two abilities are Run 3, same as the uh, Frostclaw Paladin. So before moving Night Irene, you can add 3 to the move, so 7 movement, but then you uh, lower the attack by 2. So then the attack becomes an attack of 2. What's nice about that is you can run with her and still get a decent attack, because with 7 movement, you can get onto height. And if you can get a height attack, your attack just becomes 3, which is still decent enough to, to run up and grab a height spot and get an attack off. With the Frostclaw Paladins, it's a little bit harder to decide when you want to do that just because their attack is only one. And so you really don't expect to kill anything when you're running into engagements. But with her, it's a little bit different. She does, she does like it. Overwhelm Special Attack is also really good. Uh, range 1, Attack 3, Special. Essentially, it's a double attack. I mean, you, you're guaranteed two attacks. But the second attack just gives you, gives you plus one in dice to your attack if it's the same figure. So you can target two separate figures, so an attack of three, attack of three, or it's an attack of three, attack of four on the same figure, which is really, really nice because it means that, generally speaking, she's going to be able to get a kill um, or do deal damage anytime she's using the special just because it's two attacks of three and four, um, or two attacks of three, which on lower defense squad figures could get you two kills. So the output is quite good. Um, and the survivability is super solid, and the mobility with the run option is just really, overall, really, really solid for 110 points. Keep in mind, she's bonding with the Frost Claws, so the super tanky Frost Claws with this big old hero, you're feeling pretty good for 110. Now, Irene, in a uh, very general setting, is probably not going to do super well without the Frost Claws. Uh, she's got some very limited synergy. Um, she can't bond with, you know, Knights of Western or, or other things like that, whereas the Frost Claws can have Knights, uh, or sorry, Champions as Bonders, other uh, other Jandar Champions. Um, so she is really restricted to just Frost Claw builds. Um, and where there are uh, formats where the Frost Claws can bond with Alistair or Gilbert or one of the other Bonders, she's not necessarily the first option. Now, she's a legitimate option, and she's the only option in the current AOA meta, but um, right now, I would say that overall, she's uh, sitting at a B. And the reason I say she's sitting at a B is I do feel like she's quite average. I feel like she's got a lot of good tools that are going to get her um, the the ability, like the abilities allow her to do things that are going to go well into a lot of matchups. Um, she doesn't really have bad matchups, in my opinion, and she doesn't really have amazing matchups either, right? She's not countering very many things. The special attack, again, maintains her getting good regular damage. Her mobility is good. Her over survivability is good. And so it's just all very good kind of middle-of-the-road um, stats and abilities that make her very consistent. 
Um, so I'm throwing her at a B. She could tick up to like a B plus maybe as more bears or synergies are put into the faction. But the problem with her is if the classic units that are other, you know, other champions are involved, there's just other champions like Alistair at 110 that just feel better as a bonder because you're bringing more punch with those uh, attacks of five, a little bit higher life, and you can, you know, get the overextend attack. Um, so overall, I really like Irene. I think she's a solid, solid bonder for the Frost Claws. I'm just not super convinced that she's um, above average. And so I'm keeping her at B, and I really like her stat block. I think overall she's pretty solid. Even if you somehow used her as like a filler <laughs> in some sort of draft format, she'd fill her you you know her her points kind of just on her own. Um, and so yeah, I feel pretty good about her. So I'm gonna keep it there, nice, sweet, and simple at a B for Night Irene. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>